Hi, my name is Kweku. I am a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about four dangers of high fructose corn syrup, which seems to be unavoidable these days. Everywhere you pass, every product you take seems to contain high fructose corn syrup. It is found in soda and fast foods. It is found in bread and baked goods. It is found in cereal, breakfast cereals. It is found in candies and pretty much every other product that you take contains high fructose corn syrup. Before I delve into the four specific dangers of consuming high fructose corn syrup though, let me just give you a little brief background about high fructose corn syrup. I believe it will help you better understand the dangers that these high fructose corn syrup products can, uh, can pose. So for starters, what is high fructose corn syrup? Well, high fructose corn syrup is a liquid sweetener that is made from corn. Now, when corn starch is broken down to its individual molecules, you form a you form corn syrup, which consists of 100% glucose, a simple sugar. Now, what they do then is that they add some enzymes to this glucose solution to form fructose and glucose. Now, comparatively, ordinary sugar, ordinary cane sugar, sucrose, is also made from glucose and fructose. But glucose and fructose in ordinary cane sugar is in an even um, distribution. So you have a 50-50, 50% glucose, 50% uh, fructose. On the other hand, high fructose corn syrup contains approximately 55% of fructose and 45% of glucose. Now, you may be wondering, why do manufacturers go through all that pain to manufacture high fructose corn syrup, you know, why do they have to go through all the pain adding the enzymes and things of that sort? Well, for three main reasons. Number one, it is cheaper. Number two, fructose is sweeter. And number three, in certain cases, it has even a longer shelf life. That means it can stay longer without going bad. So you have a situation where food manufacturers can actually manufacture more food or for example you can even double the size of a soda can without necessarily impairing any incremental or additional cost because you're using a relatively cheaper sweetener so to put it in perspective in the 1970s high fructose corn syrup formed just about one percent of all sweeteners in the food industry by 2004 this percentage had grown to 42 percent and the average American has gone from consuming 34 grams of fructose in a day in the 70s to about 54 in the 2000s. So that's a significant jump. Now the question is, what is the health and human cost of all this increased fructose that we are taking into our bodies? Well, I'll tell you, the first one is liver problems. Now consuming too much fructose increases the risk of developing what we call non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now this is a situation where there are literally fat droplets or fat being accumulated in the liver. Now virtually every cell in the body, the brain cell, every cell in the body can usually typically use glucose as a means of energy and you know break it down and produce energy but when it comes to fructose that job is almost exclusively limited to the liver so the more you increase your intake of fructose the liver does what it goes into a fat production cycle by a process called lipogenesis so the liver just takes the fruit all the fructose that you're giving it and just starts manufacturing fat and that fat is stored in the liver now it is called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because the liver of a person who has that condition resembles somebody who's been drinking excessive amounts of alcohol over an extended period of time now to put that in perspective in the 80s or before the 80s fatty liver non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was a virtually unknown disease fast forward to today about 30 percent of all adults in the u.s and in other western countries have this condition of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease so you see a direct correlation between increased intake of fructose and the development of fatty liver disease number two danger of consuming excess amounts of high fructose corn syrup is obesity and weight gain now granted, obesity and weight gain can be caused by several factors. It could be caused by your genetics, it could be caused by stress, it could be caused by your physical activity level. But it is a very well-known secret that consuming excess amount of sugar obviously accelerates that process. And even more so is if that sugar is in the form of high fructose corn syrup. Now why is that the case? This is because consuming high fructose corn syrup does not affect the part of the brain that con that controls your satiety, that the part of the brain that controls whether you are full or not, it doesn't control it the same way as glucose does. So for example, they in, in one study, they, gave, they, they, they divided people into two groups. They had one group take a beverage containing glucose and one group uh, take a beverage containing fructose. What they realized was that in the group that, that took the fructose, they realized that the circulating amount of the hormones that control whether you feel satisfied were not as significantly raised as the people who took the glucose. In other words, fructose does not stimulate the 
part of the brain that tells you that you're full like glucose does. So you go on an unending cycle, you're always hungry, your appetite is never suppressed and you keep on eating and eating and the result is that you gain weight, you become obese. Even worse is the fact that fructose promotes the accumulation of visceral fat. Now, visceral fat is the worst kind of fat that you can have. This is the fat that actually accumulates around the organs and stuff. And that leads to all kinds of health problems, including heart problems and diabetes. And that leads me into the third uh, danger of consuming high fructose corn syrup, which is increased risk for development of diabetes. Excessive intake of high fructose corn syrup leads to insulin resistance, which is one of the biggest risk factors for developing diabetes. Now, insulin resistance occurs when your body or your cells stop responding as it should to insulin. So it results in a situation where your body keeps on producing more and more insulin and if not checked, it results in a situation where you have extremely elevated levels of insulin, which is relatively ineffective. And therefore, even though you're producing a lot of insulin, you still have a lot of blood sugar. You know, you still have a lot of sugar circulating in the blood. And if this is unchecked, ultimately, it leads to the development of diabetes. Number four, increased risk of heart disease. Studies have shown that Excessive amounts of high fructose corn syrup leads to production of excessive amounts of cholesterol and triglycerides, which are risk factors for developing conditions like arteriosclerosis, which is the hardening of the heart, which also further down leads to major heart conditions. You know, unfortunately, a lot of the times when we talk about reducing our cholesterol, one of the things that we think of, the one of the things that comes off the top of our head is that, oh, I need to reduce my fatty food intake. Forgetting that sugar, and in this particular case, high fructose corn syrup, can be one of the most guilty culprits when it comes to increasing cholesterol. Like I explained, high fructose corn syrup is, especially the fructose aspect of it, is converted directly into fat in the body. And this fat accumulates in the inner walls of the, of the, of the arteries, it accumulates in the liver, and it leads to all kinds of heart problems. There is research to point to the fact that a six-week diet consisting of 17% fructose led to a 32% increase in, tri in circulating triglycerides. So the question is, armed with all this information, what are we supposed to do about it? Well, the first thing is that we need to cut back on products or foods that we're consuming that contain high fructose corn syrup. And one of the lowest hanging fruits is to cut back on soda. You know, back in the day, at least where I grew up, soda was a treat. It was not a meal. You don't get soda with every lunch meal. You had soda only at Christmas. These days, things have turned around. We have soda with every meal. So that is something that is one of the lowest hanging fruits that you can cut out from your diet, at least or minimize to make sure that you're not consuming too much high fructose corn syrup. Another thing is that we need to learn to read labels well. Anything you're buying, you know, flip the label, see what it contains. If it contains high fructose corn syrup, is there an alternative that does not contain it? And I believe if we you know, start taking just these basic approaches, we can significantly cut down on our consumption of high fructose corn syrup. I truly hope you found some value in this video. Look out for my other series where I'm going to be expanding this topic more. Stay blessed. Catch you on the next video.